so they, this additional technique called rationalizing substitution. Um, the, in essence, the substitution goes like this. We're going to let u equals the nth root. It works, it's working uh, not only for the square root, any root of, let's say, a function that we call g of x. Okay? Um, in this example, we're going to use the square root, though. Uh, so in example 9, we need to evaluate the integral in the numerator. We'll have x plus 4, and in the denominator, denominator we'll have x. And here you can see that I cannot use strict substitution because I need x squared. Okay? And writing uh, x is the square of the square root of x is uh, going to lead to... Uh, pain and suffering and other unpleasant uh, unpleasantries. So, so what we're going to do, uh, here we're going to use the substitution u equal the square root of x plus 4. Now, this by itself is not entirely comfortable substitution. So, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to square both sides, you're going to say that x, I'm sorry, u squared would be simply x plus 4. This is much better because I have x in the denominator and I can substitute and I can say that x by itself is going to be u squared minus 4. Okay? The next thing I need to, I need to substitute the x, right? Now, instead of using the explicit uh, expression u equal the square root, I'll use the implicit, I'll use implicit differentiation. So I take the derivative of u squared equals x plus 4 to get 2u du on the left equals dx. That's a much easier substitution than taking the explicit de derivative of du dx and with the square root. So uh, the power of implicit differentiation, I think this is the first time in this course that we're doing implicit differentiation, but you may remember its power from Calc 1. All right, so now I'm ready to do the substitution. So I, my integral, again, originally it was the square root of x plus 4, and I'll put the x in the numerator over x, will be substituted as the integral. Instead of x plus 4, I have u. Instead of the x, I have 2u du. And instead of x in the denominator, I'll have u squared minus 4. Okay? So the next step is pull out the 2 and have the integral of u squared du on top over u squared minus 4 at the bottom. And now, this is not a proper rational function because I have u squared and I have u squared minus 4, so I need to, to uh, do long division. In this case, because it's so simple, you really can avoid the long division by doing the following uh, trick. Okay? I'll write u squared. I need to have minus 4. But to compensate, I'll add 4. So I'm subtracting and adding 4. And divide by u squared minus 4 du. And now, if I break this into u squared minus 4 over u squared minus 4, which is 1, and then I end up having 4 over u squared minus 4. So I have 2 times the integral of 1 plus the integral of 4 over u squared minus 4 du. Okay? Again, if you do long division, you end up having the same result, precisely the same result. But uh, 
if the degree of the numerator equal to the degree of the denominator, you just add and subtract or subtract and add and, and in lieu of long division, it will work every time if the coefficients of the highest term are, are the same. All right, so now what? Now I need to look at the partial fraction of 4 over u squared minus 4. This is fairly easy. Uh, so partial fraction here. And 4 over u squared minus 4, I can factor it first as u minus 2 times u plus 2 and write it as a sum of a over u minus 2 plus b over u plus 2. Okay? Compare the coefficient, uh, multiply both sides by the LCD and you get 4 equal a times u plus 2 plus b times u minus 2. In this case, I give you, I, I show you one time an example where uh, instead of clearing the parentheses and comparing coefficients, we can be smart and eliminate some terms. For instance, if u equals 2, again, we can do it because this is an identity. So I can use any value of u that I want. If u equals 2, then the b terms disappeared. And what I have is 4 equals 4a, and therefore a equals 1. Likewise, I can let u equals negative 2, and I'll make the a term disappear, because now I have uh, a times 0, 4 still going to survive on the left side, and it will be negative 4b, and therefore b equals negative 1. Okay? So this is a much quicker technique than clearing the parentheses and comparing coefficient. We just eliminate stuff like so. <clears throat> and uh, and you proceed from here to solve this integral. So now we can rewrite our integral with the result of the partial fractions. So it's going to look like this. I equals, we have uh, 2 times the integral of 1. Let's not forget that. And instead of 4 over u squared minus 4, we end up having 1 over u minus 2 plus negative 1, so minus 1 over u plus 2 du, like so. And I'm ready to integrate. So <clears throat> 2, and now we'll take the antiderivative, and of course we have uh, u, and here we have the natural log of u minus 2, and here we have the natural log of u plus 2 plus c. And um, now we need to, one thing here, because I have, I don't have a, a, to deal with coefficient, I can make it a little more compact, and I write it's 2u um, plus 2 times the natural log of u minus 2 divided by u plus 2. Let's see. And time to bring back x into this expression. So remember, what was the substitution? The substitution was uh, a u was equal to square root of x plus 4 from here. So uh, it will be 2 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 2 times the natural log of the square root of x plus 4 minus 2 over the square root of x plus 4 plus 2 plus c.
That's it. This is the result. Again, this technique is necessary when you have some kind of radical, whether it would be square root or cubic root or any nth root, but you don't have inside the radicand, you don't have x squared. Just have x plus something. Uh, this would be helpful. To um, 